Hi, everybody, and welcome. Um, we're just waiting for everybody to get logged in, and then we will get started. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Nancy Bargeman. I'm the director of the Department of Developmental Services. And it looks like we have most of our participants who have been able to join us today. Um, so yeah, Charlotte, I think we're gonna go ahead and just start with a little bit of a um, introduction and then have you provide us um, some housekeeping. But before we do, I wanna just, um, Again, welcome everybody to our first of a series of symposiums that we're going to have over the next um, four weeks. Um, we're really excited about this opportunity um, and really grateful to those participants. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but today we really are focusing on um, spotlighting um, innovative and creative ways of delivering services, um, certainly aligned with the alternative service model, um, but also just in response of the challenging times that we're facing today, the creative things that people are doing to make sure that people are staying connected and also receiving services. So I will have Charlotte provide some housekeeping and instructions. We're gonna be doing um, Q&A a little bit different today. Um, if any of you were on one of the recent um, presentations or town halls, you may have seen how we were able to coordinate that, but many of you may not have been. So we're going to have um, Charlotte um, provide that review and then I'll just provide some additional information and then we'll kick it off with our um, key presenters. So Charlotte. Yeah, thank you. Um, so just a few things to note, we are recording this meeting. Um, it is going to be posted on the DDS website uh, probably tomorrow um, once it's downloaded from Zoom. And then um, the materials will also be posted on our website as well. Um, you can probably see we've got an ASL translator. Um, we have two of them for here today for you. So we've got Brandon and we've got Linda. We also have um, Spanish interpretation. Um, so if you are in need of the um, Spanish interpretation, we need you to click on the white globe at the bottom of your screen. Um, and that's labeled interpretation and then click on Spanish and mute original audio. Um, we are live streaming on YouTube. So if you are happening to catch us on YouTube, uh, then you unfortunately don't have access to the uh, Spanish translation. However, the materials are all available in Spanish um, and those will be on the DDS website. Um, we also, um, as you can tell, the only people that you can see are those on the screen right now. Um, we can't hear you, we can't see you, but you should be able to hear and see us. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, we do have a Q&A function for you to use if you have questions. So that's down here at the bottom of the screen. Just click on Q&A, enter in your question, uh, and then we have um, lots of people here that are going to be answering for them. Please make sure if you are asking a question of a specific provider that you please note that in your question, um, whether it's for the Campbell Center, becoming independent, uh, or um, uh, PathPoint. So please, please make note if it's for a specific provider. Um, I think that's all I have, um, but again, if there are any questions, please put those in the Q&A, uh, and we are excited to get started. Hey, Charlotte. Thank you, Charlotte. And I see that some of the Q&As um, folks are asking to see both the interpreter um, and the speakers, and so I'm sure that we'll be able to take a look at how we can um, kind of split the screen a little bit, so we'll, we'll see what we can do with that. 
Um, so again, I'm Nancy Bargeman, the Director of the Department of Developmental Services, and really pleased to be here with everybody um, and in introduce our, our first um, facilitators that are going to be providing um, presentations today. Um, I know that even um, without the presentations, there's still a number of questions that folks have on the alternative services. Um, some may be related to um, how the rates are established, um, follow up on any of the questions as to those next steps. But we are going to ask folks to um, be mindful that today is really about taking a look at the innovative and creative ways of delivering services. And the panelists are um, not going to be able to respond to those questions. Uh, we still have the opportunity for future conversations and staff will put in the chat where you can send questions um, if needed. Um, but first and foremost, if you have any questions, please contact your regional center. Um, they are going to have the most recent information from the department. Um, we do expect later this week that the regional centers will be receiving the vendor rates. Um, and we will also be updating our um, frequently asked questions, our FAQs on our website. So um, pay attention to the website as well, and that will be a resource for you. Uh, so again, we are going to have this series of um, four. Today is um, featuring CDSA. They are a provider association that many of you are familiar with. Um, they have members in all 21 regional centers. Um, and I, I just found a little tidbit of information in my notes here that they have their members who support approximately 55,000 individuals um, who receive services through the regional centers in California. So really appreciate their work and their members work um, and again, their um, participation today. Um, future guests that are going to be presenting over the next um, few weeks is the Autism Society of the Inland Empire. We have Friends of Children with Special Needs and then we also have innovative services that are going to be presented and coordinated by um, the State Council on Developmental Disabilities. Um, so look forward to all of theirs. Today, CDSA is going to introduce their presenters. Um, they're the Campbell Center, Pathpoint, and then Becoming Independent. And so I personally wanna thank them for um, their contribution and um, participating in sharing with everybody today. So I'm gonna hand it off to um, Barry Giardini, as well as Lauren Dow. Barry is the executive director, and Lauren is the public affairs director um, at CDSA. So thank you and welcome. And Barry, Lauren, they're all yours. Thanks so much, Nancy. And good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Barry Giardini, the executive director for the California Disability Services Association. Uh, we are thrilled and honored to um, be the first presenters on this, uh, this incredible symposium that DDS has put together. I want to thank the department um, for inviting us to present today, uh, as well as everyone who's helped coordinate today's session. Um, we're really excited about the services that our members have provided throughout the uh, pandemic. Uh, we know it's been a challenge for everyone, and we are really proud that our members have stepped up to deliver meaningful services to folks. And so what we're hoping to do today is share some of the great work of three of our outstanding member organizations, and hopefully we'll get folks inspired um, and make sure that others are, are able to glean some of the insights and knowledge um, from the presentations today. So as Nancy mentioned, we have three organizations presenting today. The first uh, will be the Campbell Center. Uh, and I want to introduce the presenters. Um, we're going to go, of course, one at a time. But each organization also has folks in the background to help answer any questions and answers in the Q&A session. So I'm gonna introduce everyone today. Um, the first organization, as I said, is the Campbell Center. Uh, presenting will be Nancy Nibruji and Adela Garcia um, with, with support from Jack Manning in the Q&A. Um, and they will be focused on the delivery of remote day services, uh, emphasizing development of their interactive game, uh, board, game board for clients. The next organization will be Becoming Independent, um, uh, presented by Kayla Talafili and supported by Tiffany Simpson. They'll be focusing on the utilization of day service staff uh, to support SLS and ILS and other partnerships between provider types, and also talk a little bit about overcoming tech barriers um, that both may have uh, faced throughout the pandemic. And finally, we'll have PathPoint today, um, presented by Karen Moore, 
um, and supported by Jeannie Barbieri Lowe and Gil Addison. Uh, Karen will be focusing on how Pathpoint has been serving individuals with high, high support needs and also talking a little bit about those partnerships between different provider types and tech issues. So with all that said, without much further ado, let's get straight to these presentations. And so I'm going to kick it over to Nancy Nibruji and Adela Garcia to share um, what's been going on at the Campbell Center. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much, Barry. Uh, let me start with our slideshow and share my screen. Okay, everybody see that? We good? The Campbell Center is located in Glendale, California. We're in Southern California in the Lanterman Regional Center District. And we serve the unique needs of about uh, 60 adults with various dis developmental disabilities. Uh, we provide three key services, residential through three group homes, supported employment and community integration. Today, I wanna to talk with you a little bit about community integration and how we kind of, how we rose to the challenges of COVID with providing those services. So here's a shot from pre-COVID. Uh, like many providers, our community, our community integration program focuses on outings, getting folks out to the communi community, going to events, going to classes, um, volunteering, uh, all those kinds of fun in-person things that they do. When COVID slammed us, we thought, how are we going to adapt? And we thought about what it is our clients are really going to miss the most. And this picture really shows it. It's the socialization, um, being together. They really love that. They love playing games at the end of the day as they were waiting for the transportation arrangements. And so we felt, uh, let's see what we can do in that realm. So we created a new tool and it's adapted to our new virtual reality. It's an interactive game board. So what we're going to share here with you today is a short two minute video with Adela Garcia with one of our associates, Joe. And Adela is going to walk Joe through the tool and show him how the game board works. And you get to be a fly on the wall and watch how that all takes place. Do you want to play Hangman today, or do you want to go ahead and play Tic-Tac-Toe, Connect Four, we can play Checkers again, we can play the board game, and I, we can do the dice roll here, but I thought it was pretty cool to go ahead and have this one here, okay, and, you can, good. and you can roll your dice here, and then it'll tell you how many times to move. Um, I also have a new memory game. Ooh, okay. Yeah, do you want to start off with that first? Yes, yeah. Yeah, all right, yeah. awesome. Okay, so let's start off with this one. Go ahead and choose a number. <sighs> number five. Number five, you got it. All right, another number. Number dos. Numero dos. Oh no. All right, let's try again. One second, Joseph. There you go. All right, nice. Good. <laughs> I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to block you. Number five. Numero cinco? Yes. Yeah. All right, you got it. All right. And then I'm going to do number six. Mine is number two. Number two. Oh, there you go. One, two, three, tic-tac-toe, you win. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is in number seven. All right. Dun, 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 And you win. Good job, Joseph. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, good job. <clears throat> apple. The word is apple. Oh, wow. All right. So, uh, um, I, I, I practice uh, my voice, um, the alphabet. Um, I know, you're so good. You're getting so good. Good job, Joseph. I'm so proud of you. Okay, so that's 
that's the video. And I'm gonna hand it over now to Adela, who's gonna show you, talk to you a little bit about uh, how we made this all work. Awesome, thank you so much, Nancy. And I hope that everyone enjoyed that two minute clip of Joseph and I. So a lot of platforms were considered before we actually developed our Google Slides. Platforms such as Kahoot, House Party, all platforms that have some sort of interactive game within them. However, we found that these were going to be a challenge in the long run just because a lot of them required to be registered and downloaded to our clients' um, devices, personal devices. And if you don't have that technical support at home, then it was going to be a challenge to meet with them on a daily basis. So we went ahead and developed our interactive Google Slides and these uh, interactive Google Slides were piloted with my son, Matthew, and a lot of key components did come out of those um, trial and error sessions. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch, them, uh, touch on them a little bit more throughout the presentation. Okay, so we're gonna jump onto the logistics of the interactive Google Slides. So we did create a Google Drive just for our pastime uh, department just so we can have somewhere to hold all our interactive materials. So we had gone, went ahead and created a Google Drive. We then created folders for each of our staff just to ensure that we're maintaining each um, file as organized as possible. And then the interactive Google Slides that you're gonna see in the upcoming slide, we just went ahead and duplicated them and added them to each of the folders. Now, each interactive um, slide deck includes a number of games um, to which we, I develop most of them out of scratch. However, there is templates out there that you can modify to each of your client's needs. And a great thing about our Google Drive is that our staff was able to get creative. And now we have numbers of folders that um, hold our virtual field trips, hold our dance, um, dance competition materials that we have. So just you know, um, clean music that we play for them. So it's a great way to keep all resources together for each of our staff. Now back to the, um, the trial and error sessions that Matthew and I had. Um, one of the biggest components that came out of it is that he was getting mixed up with the Zoom links. Um, so every time that I would send him one, um, you know, we didn't know which one we were trying to really participate in. So that kind of led me to pairing up our Zoom account that I had created just for the pastimes department with our Google Calendar. So we went ahead and then, for example, here in the picture, you'll see that the session that's going to be taken, um, that's going to be began is Hangman. So we went ahead and just re did a reoccurring link for that specific activity. Then we went ahead and just selected our Google Calendar below to ensure that it's synced with our pastime drive. Now here's a really cool snapshot of our what our calendar Google Calendar looks like. So this provides our clients as well as our family or any stakeholders with not only the activity that's going to be held on that particular day, but as well as the host or the staff, the time, the date, as well as the Zoom link that they can um, that they can go ahead and jump on the Zoom meeting with. Now. A great way to kind of get that calendar out is if you go to your settings and sharings and you do a public link that you send over to the clients and the families and stakeholders. And a really neat feature about this is that if you do any changes on the back end, um, for example, if a staff is out and they, you need another staff to come in and you wanna go ahead and put the name, that will reflect on the calendar that you already have sent out. So no need to send a double link. Now improvement on our Google Slides. So as we went ahead and interacted with our associates, we noticed that a lot of improvements had to be made depending on our associates' needs. But here in Tic Tac um, Connect 4, excuse me, as you can tell, we added the one through seven. Um, Tic Tac Toe, we just color coded the colors as well as Hangman, we just color coded the vowels to kind of get that difference. Um, a neat feature about this too is that if you have two associates in one session, you could always just have the staff be the moderator and ask, you know, associate A it wants to be red and associate B wants to be the black tile, then really you're just, the staff is there just to moderate the interactive session between two associates. 
Okay, so introducing our remote services to our staff, um, we began by giving them a Zoom training, just touch on the important features about the host responsibilities, as well as the whiteboard feature, virtual backgrounds, just to make it as fun as possible as well as a training on our Google Drive. Again, just log information, keeping all the files as organized as possible, being able to share that link with our associates and the family and stakeholders. And we did touch on etiquette guidelines. We wanna ensure that as we're bringing a piece of ourselves into the, um, in a piece of the Campbell Center into our associates home, we're just keeping that same professionalism that we would um, in person. Um, again, we wanted to avoid any clutter in the background, especially as you're sharing your screen, just you know, disabling your pop-ups, um, just to make it a little bit neater. We wanna protect not only our clients' privacy, but our staff as well. So I hope this was as helpful as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back to Nancy. And I just wanted to sum up that we had several key takeaways with this process. Uh, I think we underestimated the tech abilities of our staff and our, our clients, our associates, um, but with the training, they rose to the occasion. We're really pleased to see that. Uh, we see this as perhaps a springboard where this platform can be, be, be used for more sophisticated kinds of interactions. This is really just a first step uh, that was kind of our immediate COVID reaction. Uh, we've done some surveys and these kinds of virtual options are popular. About 80% of our associates who are part of this program uh, want to continue it even once they come back to regular community uh, integration kinds of activities. Um, as Adela touched on, the staff training has improved our staff tech capabilities, which I think we're going to need more and more going forward, and their creativity. So we are able to build a team uh, instead of just one individual creating content. Uh, so we're getting to that. And we feel it's been a win for person-centered planning and um, person-centered thinking because uh, it's brought more individualized kinds of uh, a approaches for each of ones of our associates. So I'm going, that's, that's it. I'm going to stop my screen sharing and, um, and hand it off and introduce Karen Moore uh, from PathPoint, who's going to do the next presentation. Thank you very much. Well, hi, everybody. My name is Karen Moore. I want to thank Nancy and your team for your great presentation. And I just need a nod if my uh, screen share is being shared. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Well, I am very happy to be talking to you today uh, about the services provided by PathPoint. I'm going to give a brief overview of who we are as an agency, then talk about how we are providing supports since COVID. PathPoint provides services to almost 300 individuals in five counties, including the cities of Paso Robles in the north, Bakersfield and Lancaster in the east and Long Beach in the Southern California area. Our services range from employment, helping people secure jobs and providing job coaching, supporting people in their homes with independent living services and providing community integration services in our day supports. For our day services pre-COVID, most people came to one of our facilities and then access the community with support from staff or participated in activities of their choice at the facility. And I'm having just a little technical difficulty here. Let me get to the right side. Here we go. Since COVID, our day services look very different. A person-centered approach is used when deciding what services a person wants this is a quick overview of the options a person can choose for alternative services now and perhaps going forward. The individual receiving services and their circle of support let us know what activities the individual wants, such as in-home supports, accessing the community for walks, practice wearing masks and physical distancing. The person might want remote services or learning opportunities via Microsoft soft teams, Zoom and FaceTime and connecting either individually or in small groups. We send home weekly packets and have follow-ups with the individuals either through group meetings, classes or individually with personal phone calls. 
A few people we work with only want a phone call and the individual lets us know the best time to reach them. Others might need us to, to deliver personal protective equipment or PPE to them and their family or get assistance with shopping or transportation. Here are two examples of alternative services provided in our community integration day services. Packets are sent home the prior week for daily activities for the following week. An overall theme is typically used for the week, but each packet is customized as to what is important to the person. For example, if a person likes sports, the activities inside the packet will be more sport related. The packets are also customized to both physical and cognitive abilities. The picture on the right shows staff taking a walk with an individual, practicing social distancing, and wearing a mask while doing some stretches too. Neighborhood walks are very popular with some of the individuals we support. Another choice is remote learning. This is one example of our over 200 live online classes that we provide every week. In this picture, staff is conducting an art project and the people at home are following along remotely. A packet was sent home the prior week and had instructions and supplies needed for everyone who wanted to participate. Most art projects include items readily found at home, but occasionally Pathpoint provides supplies in the packets too. Other than the activity itself, people really enjoy time spent with staff and their peers. We schedule time for people to socialize with each other if that's what they would choose to do either before, during, or after an activity. This is a picture of two um, high need individuals who have known each other for many years. They were used to spending time together Monday through Friday and had done so for years in one of our day services. When COVID hit, that stopped and they really missed visiting with each other and seeing each other. One friend had an iPad, but the other did not have any type of technology she could use at home. Pathpoint was able to get the technology to the other friend and teach her how to use it. This is the picture of the day they were able to spend time seeing each other, visiting and knowing that each other was okay. I cannot emphasize enough how this type of contact makes a difference for the people we support. Since this visit, they have enjoyed many more. Here's an example of a fun Friday event. The theme for the week was fantasy. In the art class, the individuals at home made a fantasy creature while staff at the program made a dragon. During the week, activities were themed around fantasy. Uh, these are pictures of a play that the staff performed during a remote class. Another theme we used was summer games. For that week in an art activity, they made Olympic torches and paddles like the ones in the lower right hand side. In music class, the Olympic theme was used to start the class. I bet you all could sort of hum it to yourselves right now. In gardening class, they talked about the importance of athletes eating a healthy diet and they planted zucchini, which they'll be checking on in later classes and activities. In cooking class that week, they made individual Olympic pizzas, as you can see on the picture, and put the toppings on top in the shape of the Olympic rings. Anyone who logged into the class that day received their own Olympic pizza delivered to their home. On Fun Friday, the staff from two different programs did different relays with each other, and the individuals watching were the judges, and they raised their paddles to indicate who won. And of course, they tended to pick their favorite staff regardless of who crossed the finish line first. Other themes included camping week, wacky week. We did quite a few travel weeks such as Hawaii, Italy, Thailand, Australia, Switzerland, fall in the fall, superheroes, etc. The people supported in the activities choose what they want to focus on for the themes. And a website we use for customizing bingo cards is Bingo Baker. Dot com. We can incorporate the theme of the week into the bingo cards. A different type of remote service we offered was our Hispanic Heritage Month event, where staff worked together to develop a flyer inviting everyone to drive through our parking lot to honor Hispanic Heritage Month. 
they listened to traditional music, learned about different people that have impacted us today, and then followed up with a goodie bag to take home. In the goodie bag was a CD with a playlist from the event, traditional candies, as well as a bookmark that had QR codes that would take the person to websites that offer different resources around the community. At the end of the month, we are hosting a couple of Halloween drive throughs in our parking lot at both our San Luis Obispo and Bakersfield sites. Health and wellness is a frequent class and activity. You can visit our website to see some videos we made about making masks, proper wares, proper ways to wear masks, wash hands, and some fun and healthy recipes. And some of our videos are in Spanish. For some individuals in our employment services, our residential supports who were laid off from work told us they were bored and wanted something to do during the day. They have really enjoyed watching the videos along with connecting with others during our remote live sessions. We have also worked with some people laid off work to create digital resumes. We use adaptive technology during our alternative remote sessions. This is a picture of staff doing a remote signing lesson with a high needs individual supported. One support staff helping at home is hard of hearing. PathPoint staff use Wavelow for interpretation services to be able to communicate with the home staff while working with a person served. We have supported other individuals by assessing the technology they need and teaching them how to use it along with providing adaptive equipment when needed. We have also offered sessions with support staff in their home to teach them how to log on to our remote sessions. We appreciate all of our partners have important partnerships with families. The top example is from a parent thanking us for the variety of supports offered to her son. We also have strong partnerships with residential providers. The second example states, you and the staff have gone beyond the call of duty by including us. Our clients enjoy the services. Thank you and your staff for personalizing the remote sessions. What is more interesting that I love about your community access program is you allowed us to include non-CAP clients and they enjoy your services as well. Another example not less listed, but I wanna share with you is about a person we supported for years in our day services. She was having behavior challenges at home and when we reached out to the provider about having our remote services in the home, since they only had a few people who could log into our services. The provider didn't feel they had the staff to support this. So while we were having a remote session with a person from that home who had an iPad, the individual who was having the challenges saw the remote session on her friend's iPad and suddenly changed her entire demeanor. She was happy and excited to see the staff. She was used to seeing five days a week and some of her friends from the day service too. Once staff at the residence saw the impact of our, our, that our services had, we worked with them to create a plan to provide more remote services in the home. We were able to secure some grants to help us purchase technology and set up the residence with a large screen TV, iPad, internet, and staff to assist people who wanted to join in remote sessions. PathPoint staff brings a bag of supplies Monday through Friday and is greeted by many who can't wait to participate. Please check out our YouTube channel to see this fun video, Pass the Sanitizer, created by people supported while learning about hand hygiene. It's hard to showcase all the alternative services we are providing to people. What is important to remember is to individualize what is offered to meet the need and desire of the people supported. Please let me know if you want any further information or have any questions by utilizing the quick Q&A. I want to thank you, CDSA and DDS, for having me today. I'm passing this now to Kayla from Becoming Independent.
Hello, I'm Kayla Talafili from Becoming Independent. Kayla, are you waiting for the video to kick in? I wasn't sure if I could be heard. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, great. I'm Kayla Talafili. I'm the service director of community-based day programs at Becoming Independent. I'm joined today by Tiffany Simpson, service director of employment services. We have a video to share with you today that highlights alternative services at Becoming Independent. So Charlotte, we'll get that started. What began as a grassroots parent-led organization over 50 years ago has grown into the largest service provider of its kind in the North Bay, serving Sonoma, Napa, and Marin County. Becoming Independent, or BI, is a social impact organization that supports people with disabilities in becoming more engaged and independent members of the community. Becoming Independent, or BI, serves people with varied interests and life objectives who share a common goal of discovering and maximizing their abilities. They are workers, students, artists, volunteers, family members, and neighbors. BI's philosophy and approach is to elevate human abilities and support pathways for people to be productive and engaged community members. BI continues to grow and evolve, serving nearly a thousand people each year and always staying close to the values that matter most. Human dignity, empowerment, integrity, community, and innovation. Each person has the opportunity to explore their unique interests and achieve their life goals by accessing BI's day programs, independent and supported living, and employment support. Like many programs across the nation, Becoming Independent has made a shift from offering traditional day program services to alternative services. During this transition, it has been our priority to ensure that we stay true to our values and what we stand for. During traditional service delivery, a typical day for a person in a day program may look like getting picked up by a BI bus and being transported to BI's beautiful campus, where that person would meet their crew for the day and prepare for the day's activities. Throughout the day, that person would benefit from authentic human connection and an inclusive community experience. Today, that person's services have altered completely. However, it is still our goal to foster human connection and an inclusive community experience, but now just a little differently and a lot more virtually. To meet the needs of the people that we serve, we created and implemented several pieces that sum up our alternative services. These pieces include a robust virtual day program, creative and socially distant visits and activities, innovative technology solutions, utilizing day service staff to support independent and supported living services. With each of these elements requiring us to collaborate with residential and other service providers like never before. First, I'd like to highlight our virtual day program newsletter. Each week, this newsletter gets sent to 417 recipients across our day programs, tailored day services, and employment support programs. These recipients include residential service providers, other day program organizations, family members, and of course, the people we support. Let's take a look at last week's newsletter. The newsletter features agency announcements like this one, featuring BI's first ever virtual Halloween dance. And just to get a little plug in here, this dance is open to the public. If you and your loved ones would like to join, you can find the link on our Facebook page. Additionally, our direct support professionals put together videos and activities that highlight their talents and the interests of the people they support. This leads us to BI's YouTube channel, 
which features all of the staff and client created content for anyone's viewing pleasure. Our most popular videos range in pie in the face trivia to haunted house tours. Next, our newsletter recipients can join in on Zoom events hosted by their peers and direct support professionals. Last week, we offered 76 different virtual group events like cooking class, book friends, and job readiness. This gives everyone an opportunity to connect with their community. Lastly, the newsletter features resources we've pulled together that we thought might be of interest to people during their downtime. You can always find fun snippets of local news, feel good moments, and do it yourself art projects. In an effort to support other service providers and those individuals that haven't had the opportunity to connect with a program, we've made all of our virtual offerings public. We've received feedback from residential service providers, people outside of our county, and even out of the state on how much they enjoy engaging on our virtual platforms. Each week we post this newsletter to our Facebook page to invite our community to join in on the fun and connect with one another. With our alternative services, including the opportunity for in-person time, BI staff and clients were thrilled to be able to connect again face-to-face. -face. We have enjoyed getting creative on building activities and learning opportunities. Our in-person visits might include activity drop-off kits, exercising together, neighborhood walks, and sometimes neighborhood bike rides. This time has not only affected those in our day program services, but those in our independent and supported living and employment programs too. These essential services provide community-based support to so many and help people acquire and retain the skills in a one-on-one -on -one setting. Having such a diverse and talented staffing team has benefited our services and offered us an opportunity to cross train and further collaborate with one another. In the month of October, our day program staff will support 1,708 hours of ILS and SLS shifts, averaging 427 hours a week. This cross utilization of skills ensures that the continuity of service that was experienced in our day program is able to be maintained given the essential nature of those programs. Our staff have shared that this cross-pollinization of program exposure has helped them to deepen their appreciation of the whole service for the whole individual approach, meaning having a better understanding and grasp of how to offer support when a day program impacts home life, which impacts employment goals. We've considered this cross-training one of the silver linings of the COVID-19 pandemic had we not been thrusted into this new way of service, we would have never experienced the benefits. Technology has given us the advantage to stay connected and engaged. However, for those who rely upon BI for access to technology, the shift has been far more challenging. Staff have worked across the agency to share devices whenever feasible. This resulted in being able to support 57 people from our day program in either obtaining a device to use, setting up an email account, accessing Zoom, or learning how to use a device for the first time. We aim to bridge the divide between those with access to personal mobile technology and those who rely upon BI for shared devices through grant asks and other fundraising efforts. In these times, we are motivated to quickly alleviate the anxiety that accompanies unequal access to services. We are committed to ensuring that everyone has access to the technology they need to stay connected. So let's hear from the people we support at Becoming Independent on how they've experienced alternative services. Pretty boring because I am not... I'm. I know I'm interacting with. 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 I'm. I know way to to get. Um, 
build anything. I have no computer, but things to... The eyes of the Dharma, they gave me the candle, so now I'm interacting with my uh, peers. That's and now we keep it, and that we keep in touch on the phone. So we do that. Um, mostly we have, mostly on Thursdays when we have a Zoom call, mostly we just talk about like a little bit of relation stuff, relation stuff, mm -hmm. and most, and also like this, uh, calendar the about the yeah we look at zip. your schedule for the week to kind of see yeah what we're gonna what you're gonna do i like the zoom meetings uh, when you get to talk to the to the to your friends yeah. i like to um go out to starbucks uh talk go on zoom yeah uh, i will say I like doing the lunch social hour with with Nick, and um, I would say, and I would say for you already. great guy going on walks and watch, watching videos with stuff that's awesome yeah that's, that's been yeah. a one of my favorite things too is just being able to reconnect with people you know mm -hmm. It's really cool. So I'm not isolated anymore with the, without my uh, Kindle. So thank you, everybody. Yeah. Well, sorry about those technical difficulties, but thanks for watching our video. Thank, thank you, Kayla, um, and thank you, Karen, Nancy, and Adela as well um, for your wonderful presentations. I know we are running a little bit short on time, but we're hopeful that we can uh, can get in a few questions from each group. And I know that each of you have a, a staff member who's been monitoring the Q and A. And I don't know if anyone is queued up and, and ready to to ask some questions that have been in the chat. I see Jack is on here at least. Maybe you can jump in. Sure. Yeah, we're we're ready to go. Um, so our first question was from uh, Jojo Sanchez, and the question was, uh, how were the games made? And I think Adela would be equipped to answer that. Yeah, sure. So a lot of the games were made um, from scratch using Google Slides. So like I mentioned, there was a lot of trial and error there in developing the actual interaction um, sites. However, you could find now templates and just kind of modify them um, and I know that Nancy and I have talked about, um, and I, I guess I'll let Nancy talk, um, pass it over to Nancy so she can let um, folks know a little bit more of how we can get this out there. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and pick up on that. Well, a couple of people asked about how they could access this. Uh, we thought about that. Certainly we can share the, we can, um, share, share the site with folks. We're thinking, though, it would be nice. We'd like to talk to CDSA and see if we can't create more of a crowdsource sort of situation where we're not the only ones adding games. In other words, it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to share the platform with others and then they add their own games and then we all stay in our own little silos. So it would be lovely if we could um, find a way to make this more of a crowdsourced sharing thing that all of us could build on. But that's just my big, big, hairy, audacious idea. <laughs> we'd, love, we'd love to talk with you all more about it. And we have um, one more question. This is from Nina uh, Spiegelman. And the question is, how did you deal with clients who are resistant to or refusing to use Zoom? And was anyone with the clients in real time? And again, I think Adela is equipped to answer that question. 
Yeah, of course. Um, we did have a lot of uh, challenges, especially for our older clients. Um, you know, we wanted to be mindful of not bringing any more discomfort to them. So as I mentioned, once you share the Google Calendar with either a family caregiver and you have that on your desktop, there's no need to download Zoom. Once you click on the link for that particular day or that activity, it will automatically open up um, into the web browser. So we just wanted to, we went ahead and just showed them clips of what we're doing and just motivate them. We had, we did have a um, speaking night where families joined us and our executive director and Nancy were there and we touched a little bit more on what we're doing just to show them that we're here for them and we wanna make it as easier as possible. I think those were our three, Barry, if others have some questions they wanna answer from their presentation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Campbell Center team. Um, uh, Jeannie or Gil from, from Pathpoint, did you uh, see any questions in the Q&A that you wanted to answer? Or um, Tiffany from BI? Sure, we had two questions for Pathpoint. Um, Karen, this is a question from Marcy Day. Uh, her question is, while I love the individualized packets, how do you find the time, staffing, and resources to create them? And then the follow-up question from a couple of people is if you could repeat the bingo website for making uh, individualized games. Okay, uh, well, I'll start with the bingo uh, website. It's bingo baker, B-I-N-G-O-B-A-K-E-R.com. And we have several of our, several day services, a total of around 10. So staff really collaborate together, share ideas, uh, and we have a resource online through um, PathPoint via Teams where we share some of those ideas so that each individual program doesn't have to completely come up with the same idea, although they'll usually take an idea and customize it, individualize it for the people they support. But yes, it does take time to make those packets, definitely, and it takes time to deliver them to everyone's house. Although I have to say when they deliver them, uh, the residents or families want to know what time are we coming by so that they can have the individual in their home, be ready at the window, uh, wave, um, or sometimes even meet us at the door using social distancing. So, uh, and all in all, it's really a worthwhile project. Thank you, and um, I can any, chime any in. On... Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Barry. Go ahead. No, no, <laughs> yeah, no, I was no. just go gonna go in with the, some of the questions. So, um, one of the questions, or a question we got multiple times, was how did we prepare our staff for the um, technology and training? So, Kayla, if you wanted to go ahead and answer that. Yeah, sure. That's a great question. When this all started, our first priority was to ensure that staff felt taken care of with all the unknowns about the pandemic and the emotional stress from the changes with childcare and work situations, we decided to utilize some of the time to encourage and train our staff. We put together a pretty robust, very similar to our virtual day program newsletter. We put one together for staff um, and they did it for about 25 weeks and engaged in different trainings ranging from infection control to Zoom etiquette. They expressed gratitude for the way we were able to utilize that time and provide them with some professional and personal development activities and help them find a balance with this confusing time. Definitely those Zoom videos were really helpful for myself and other staff have reported that. Um, another question that we got was, is the virtual platform available uh, 24 hours or how can it be accessed? Yeah, definitely. Our virtual newsletter is posted to our Facebook page. You can find it by typing in Becoming Independent. We post it every Monday by noon. So you can tune in. All of the resources are available 24-7. And then the Zoom classes that are open to the public usually fall between 8 a.m. and 4. Thank you. That was the bulk of our questions.
Okay, it is it is four o'clock. I know that um, there were other questions and comments, a lot of questions, of course, about alternative services more generally. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get to all those today, but I did want to just take this uh, opportunity here at the end to say, you know, the contact information for CSA, but also, importantly, the three presenters um, is on this it's on the slide here so that you can, if you have any follow-up questions, you can reach out directly to them. I want to thank um, everyone from the Campbell Center Pathpoint and Becoming Independent for the time it took to prepare, all the great work you've been doing, and your willingness to share um, with, with stakeholders throughout the state. Really appreciate you stepping up. I um, also want to thank DDS for the opportunity and partnership in um, letting us kick off the Symposium on Innovative Services. So with that, Charlotte, I believe I'm kicking it over to you to, um, to wrap on the DDS side. Yeah, and um, I'm actually going to say just a few things and then I'm going to pass it to Nancy to let her do the official closing of the meeting. But um, I saw a lot of people asking if this will be um, recorded and posted. And yes, all of the information will be on the DDS website. Um, we also have a survey that will pop up at the end of this meeting. Um, for those of you on Zoom, there will be a survey. We please ask that you take it. Um, we want to make sure that we're providing you with information that you want and that we did a good job. We're always looking for ways to improve. So we would love your feedback on how today went. Um, and so with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Nancy. Thank you, Charlotte. And um, thank you, Barry. Thank you, the whole team that um, spent time today. Um, and I just want to reiterate kind of what um, Barry and Charlotte had expressed is appreciation. Um, and I want to thank our attendees um, who spent the time with us. Um, we'll look forward to the next few um, um, symposiums that are coming up. Um, as Charlotte said, we have a little very, very, very brief survey. It's not going to take you long at all. Um, we want to make sure that since um, we have opportunities to um, build and, and on our uh, approach to the symposiums that you can help us with this um, and also just get a sense of who's, um, who's attending. So thank you all. Um, we're going to keep the, the um, the Zoom on so we can have the survey. Charlotte's going to go ahead and um, have that um, populate up. Thank you. Have a, a, a great rest of your day and continue to be safe. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.